We do believe in pro COVID protocols here. Amen. Amen. Sister Carol or Mother Thomas, can you wipe the podium? Amen. Before he dons the platform. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. We honor the Lord. We honor Dr. Bowles on today. First Lady, to my wife, to all the pastors and clergy. Amen. To the family on today. Amen. We're praying for you. I met Deacon Bowles from his daughter a few years ago, and we became pretty good friends over the years. Amen. I, I call myself his honorary fishing buddy. <laughs> Amen. Honorary fishing buddy. And the reason why I have to put the term honorary is because we've never went fishing. Amen. We, we talked about it. Amen. But we couldn't come to a happy medium about it. Amen. I wanted to sit on the dock. Amen. And throw the fish, the, the, the rod out there. And he wanted to get on his boat. Amen. And I don't do water. Amen. So we can never come to the happy medium. And it don't matter when we seen them. We, we, at the restaurant, we would talk about food. We would talk about uh, church. We would talk about this. But you know, was, he came to my business. I would go to his business. Amen. And no matter where we were, just the storage one time. We would talk about church. We would talk about some things, but he would always come around to when we go on fishing. <laughs> I said, I'm ready. I said, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. And then here come the boat. <laughs> Pastor Brown, we're going to get on my boat. I said, we're not getting on your boat. <laughs> Amen. And Dr. Bowles didn't make it no better. I was talking to him one night, and he shared with me when they was younger, when he was younger, he, he said he fell off the boat. I said, oh, I'm really not getting on the boat with <laughs> And then his daughter had a video where she was driving the boat. And I said, I'm not getting on the boat with him. Amen. But I loved him. I, uh, I was, my heart was sad. Amen. When, when the word came in. Amen. We began praying for the family. Hey, let's pray. Amen. For Dr. Bowles. Amen. This is not an easy assignment. Amen. This is his father. This is the man that gave him life. Amen. Let's pray for all of the family his siblings, amen, to all his daughter, amen. Let's lift them up in prayer, amen, because when all the sin is over, when all the dancing is over, amen, the pain and the loss is still going to be there, amen. So let's continue to hold him up in prayer, amen. Mr. Bowles, we love you. Dr. Bowles, I love you, amen. If you need anything, amen, we're glad to be an assistance to you, amen. I got a text, amen, about... Um, could I um, help with something? And I said, whatever he need me to do, tell him I'm willing to do it. Amen. So we're just grateful today to be here and be a part of this celebration. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Amen. I never was in service with him, but I heard he was a praiser. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he's already happy with what's going on. God bless you. Amen. And we love you. Amen. Can we give Dr. Brown a hand? Amen. Pastor Brown, thank you so much. Thank you so very much. This time we are going to add two people to the program. Our mayor of the city of Kent is going to come and give expressions of love. Following her will be our chief of police, Chief Rafael Padilla. At this time, can we put our hands together for Mayor Dana, Mayor Dana Ralph, and Chief Padilla, we work hand in hand together in this city, doing great, great work together with myself, Dr. Bowles. I'm so honored that they are here today. They're busy, you all, busy in the big city of Kent, working and doing God's work, amen? And I'm honored that they chose 
little low redeemed as we call ourselves to do this great work and partnership with so please celebrate them today as they come chief and mayor god bless you Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so the first hat that I have on today is I am the mayor for the city of Kent, and I'm here in that official capacity to give thanks for Deacon Bowles because of what he gave our city, which is Pastor Bowles. And Pastor Bowles is doing amazing things in our city and I am so grateful for that. The other hat that I have on that I feel like is maybe the, the bigger one is family. There are those people that come into your life, that God brings into your life, that you know it's not passing, it's not fleeting, and it will be a bond that is special enough to be able to call family. And I will tell you, I look at Lady Bowles and Pastor Bowles, and I consider them to be part of my family. As family, we mourn together, and due to the amazing miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mourning is fleeting. As family, we get to celebrate together, and that is eternal. And for that, I am grateful, and I will stand by the two of you and celebrate forever. Thank you all for being out here to honor Deacon Bowles today and support the family. Um, losing a parent is never an easy thing. I think about the non-believers in our life and my heart breaks because the end is a horrible thing. But when you get to think about eternity and know that you are going to see your loved one again, that they're waiting for you, they're paving the way, they're there, there is no better feeling, no more comfort than that. So we can all we can all find comfort in that and joy in that and know that together we can celebrate. So thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you. All right. There we go. Good afternoon. Um, it's an honor to be here uh, to celebrate the life of, of Deacon Bolts. And um, I just appreciate the opportunity and want to express my sincere condolences to the family. Um, I didn't know Deacon Bowles, um, but I've read about him here. I've talked to, I call him Pastor Bowles, Dr. Bowles. Um, we've had lots of talks about titles. To me, pastor's a higher standing than doctor, but he's earned the doctor title, so I will call him Dr. Bowles. You know, the mayor said it right, is that you look at a person's life and, and what, when I come to memorial services, I always think about what the legacy of the human being was. And again, not knowing Deacon Bowles, I know what his legacy is because I can see it here. I can see it in his son and Lady Bowles and Redeemed uh, and the, the wonderful works of God that are being done in the city of Kent. Genuine, real work. We work with a lot of organizations, and I will tell you, this church, this congregation, is directed by God and is doing incredible things. Amen. So when I look at how a person lives their lives, not in judgment, but just, you know, just to study, just like, what do I want to define as success in my life? And I look at Deacon Bowles, and it is clear he was a man of God that he lived a God-purposed life, and when it's all said and done, the Lord's going to say, well done, good and faithful well servant, well done. So for that, I, my heart goes out to you. I'm here to celebrate his memory um, and to enjoy and recognize his legacy will continue on. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. We love you so much, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. They were right there when I sent the text message that dad had passed. Can we celebrate them one more time, please? Thank you. Our mayor and our chief.
they were just so broken with us and they celebrated his life with us and we appreciate them today at this time i'm going to do acknowledgments and resolutions and we know that there were many 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 cards sent and mailed and brought here to the church many resolutions and my husband says take your time sweetie and I want you to read them all I'm not going to read them all not all the cards but I am going to do the re the recognitions and the condolences amen we thank God for all pastors ministers would you stand at this time and we want to acknowledge you, all pastors, all elders, bishops, ministers, we celebrate you and we thank you. Can we give them a hand? Our spiritual leaders, missionaries, evangelists, shepherdess, thank you today and their wives, amen their spouses, amen, or husbands. We celebrate them today. Thank you so much. Amen. It gives me great honor to read from the cards that are here with love from siblings, Byron, Stacy, and Tamara. With love, Latricia, Byron, Deontay, Linda, and family. My dearest big brother, John and Michelle Lewis family. Amen. Pastor and Lady Brown and the VIP Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. May God's love surround you and keep you through this time of sorrow in deepest sympathy. Victory and Praise Church Family, Pastor Delvin, Lady Carol Brown. Amen. To Pastor and Lady Bowles and Family from Lady Berry. With sympathy, with sympathy from the Kent Sunrise Rotary Sunshine Club. Amen. Who Pastor Bowles is a member of. We are also members of the African American RV club called the Fun Seekers. They have sent their love as well. From our international church, deepest condolences, dear Evangelist Bowles and Dr. Bowles. On behalf of all the elect ladies internationally, we extend our most sincere commiserations to you and your family during the transition of your father and father in love deacon lawrence bowles jr we pray that the god of all comfort brings you and your family peace gives you strength and encourages your hearts during this difficult time amen let the poem the bend in the road be a comfort to you this was sent by President Elder Gary Sprewell, International President of Evangelists of the Church of God in Christ. Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole, International Elect Lady, Church of God in Christ. Evangelist Latara Tillman, Assistant Elect Lady. And Supervisor Diane North, Assistant Elect Lady, International Department of Evangelism. Church of God in Christ, Missouri Midwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Bishop Elijah Hankerson III, General Board Member, Church of God in Christ, Jurisdictional Bishop and Founder. To Dr. Lady, Dr. and Lady Lawrence Bowles III and family, our hearts grieve with you on the passing of your beloved father, Lawrence Bowles Jr. Please know that your Missouri Midwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction family is holding you up in prayer. Signed by none other than Bishop Elijah Hankerson III, General Board Member. 
from the Washington State Jurisdiction Women's Department. Dr. Lawrence Bowles and Evangelist Missionary Bowles and family, on behalf of the Washington State Jurisdictional Department of Women, Church of God in Christ, we bow our head in humble submission as we do accept the sovereign will of the Almighty God, our Father, who in his infinite wisdom has called him from this earthly place, your Father and precious loved one, Deacon Lawrence Bowles, Jr., prayerfully submitted the 14th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2022, Mother Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, Jurisdictional Supervisor, Washington State Jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ. The old landmark district where you serve in the district, Dr. Bowles. Condolences offered in tribute to and in honor of Deacon Lawrence Bowles Jr., the righteous perish, no one layeth it to the earth, and the merciful are taken away, no one considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. They shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds. On behalf of the old landmark district, we submit to the infinite wisdom of the Lord who has beckoned your loved one, Deacon Lawrence Bowles Jr., to come home. Prayerfully submitted on this 14th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2022, uh, Second Administrative Assistant Sam L. Townsend Sr., District Superintendent, Old Landmark District, Washington State Jurisdiction. Trust in the Lord, Unity Christian Ministries. Saturday, May 14, 2022, resolution in loving memory of Deacon Lawrence Bowles Jr., J.C. According to his tender mercy, God in his infinite wisdom has seen fit to move our beloved Deacon J.C. Bowles onto his reward in the heavens on Sunday, April 24, 2022. Respectfully submitted, Bishop Lenal and Pastor Ina Battle, Senior Pastors, Unity Christian Ministries, Sister Beverly Miller, Church Administrator. Amen. And our final resolution, honoring the life and the legacy of Deacon Lawrence Bowles, Jr. Though your days among us were too brief and our grief at your loss is never ending, we draw comfort from the knowledge that you have found safe refuge in the Lord and in our hearts where no darkness or pain can touch you now. We bless you with the love and light and our gratitude. Your life was a blessing, your memory a treasure. His legacy of faith and service will continue to aspire loved ones and every member of the congregation. Therefore, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and all resolutions and copies will be given to the family. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Deacon Bowles, this is humbly submitted in faith and appreciation from the Redeemed by the Blood Community Church of God in Christ, Reverend Dr. Lawrence Bowles III and First Lady Bowles. Amen. I would like at this time for the children of Deacon Lawrence Bowles Jr. to stand, all children. Wave your hand. Can we celebrate them, amen? Thank you. All siblings of Deacon Lawrence Bowles Jr., amen? God bless them. God bless them. God bless them. Thank you. Thank you so much. We praise God. Nieces and nephews and cousins, will you stand at this time? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you and we celebrate you today, family. I know it's hard to bury and to see a loved one go. I had to do this walk in 2018, 
my mother and my father. But when I tell you when they leave a legacy down inside of you that you have to carry the mantle on, that is what they wished for us to do. So we're going to continue to do just that. At this time, words of expression. Five minutes each. As a father, my sister, Salathia Bowles, as a friend, Deacon Raymond Thomas, and as a brother, Larry Bowles. Following them will be a musical selection, He'll Welcome Me by the Celebration Ensemble. Please come in that order. Amen. Um, my father and I, we were alike in so many ways. Um, we both like math. We both like counting. Um, it was kind of funny because we both like doing things in even numbers. And our, my brother's the same way. We like doing things in even numbers. <laughs> um, when we're like eating something or um, like if we're sorting something, do it in evens. That was something we inherited from our father. Um, my dad and I love going to baseball games. Um, we went to a lot of Mariners games together. Um, we used to talk a lot. I remember when I was um, working at Pac-Med, I had to commute from Tacoma to Seattle. Coming home was like a two hour drive and my dad would always talk to me the whole ride. He would keep me company, we would laugh, we would joke. Um, he would keep me company and speaking of the drive, he's the whole reason why I even got my license because I was always one scared to drive. And <laughs> he was like, no, my daughter can drive. You're going to drive. And he would force me to drive when he would come get me. And he taught me to drive. He took me to take my drive test. And I'm thankful for that. And when I um, finished the test and found out I passed, I tried to and um, I tried to act like I had failed it when I came back up to him. And he was like, what happened? And then I just couldn't hold it. And he was just so happy for me and so proud of me for that accomplishment. So I thank God for my dad. Um, I love my dad, and I would definitely miss my dad. Yeah. Raymond Thomas, I'm a deacon for Unity Christian Ministry, and uh, JC was a friend of mine there. Uh, when I met JC was in about seven and a half years ago. He had just started coming to my church, and we was at a women's uh, conference at our church, and we met. And from that moment on, we became like brothers. And we did everything together. He was always at my house. I was always calling him on the phone. We was doing things together. And uh, then, uh, you know, as we went on in church, uh, my bishop put me over the all men's quartet. So I started the quartet, and JC would, would start singing with us. And I gave JC a song and uh, told him uh, I got a song for him to sing. He was so proud that I gave him a chance to, to lead the song. So, well, we rehearsed with the song. We rehearsed with the song. And then finally I came to him. I said, okay, this is your Sunday, man. You're singing your song. You're going to lead today. And he got in there. <laughs> Boy, did he tear that church up with this? <laughs> he walked down the aisles. He come back up the aisle. He got down on one knee. And he just sang that song. I was so proud of him up there. He's a great friend. I'm going to miss him. I miss him calling me. I miss calling him. We go out to eat breakfast all the time. We want to but he love to go out and eat. But I tell him, man, just come over to the house. I'm going to cook some breakfast. We ain't going out to eat today. We're going to eat at the house. And so he would come over, and he would spend all day with me. We did a lot together. I'm going to miss him. I really miss his calling me. Bugging me all the time. What you doing? What you doing, man? I'm doing the same thing I was doing an hour ago, bro. You just called me. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. But, yeah, I love JC. I'm going to miss him. He was a great deacon. He was a great friend. 
and I'm gonna miss you. And to the Bowles family, you have my deepest condolences. Thank you. Good morning, church. First, giving honor to God, pastor, nephew. I'd like to thank all of those who came in today, family and friends. My brother Lawrence Bowles Jr. and I am Larry Bowles Jr. is in heaven. If you know anything about Jr., he's up in heaven, but he's got his fishing pole with him. He's got his music on the side of him and the Lord on the other side. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing to be here and talk about my brother. Heaven is a long ways up. I'll never reach it on my own. I have to reach it through the Lord's hands. Heaven is high. Heaven so high, so high. You can't get over so low, so low. You can't get around it so wide, so wide. You can't get around it. You must come in at the door. Well, the baptism go by the water, and the Michigans go by the land. And if you expect to see my Jesus, you got to make it hand in hand. Heaven so high, so low, so high, can't get under it. So high, you can't get around it. You must come in at the door. Thank you. Goodbye, Junior. I'll see you again. Lord, say the same. And we will fish. Amen. How many know he's going to welcome us home one day? We're living this life just to live again. Now, I want to share something with y'all. We tried to end the, end the rehearsal with this song last rehearsal, and we end up staying an extra hour just on the floor on our faces. So we're going to try to get through to this song this morning. Come on, Sister Jamie Hampton's coming. Jesus will welcome me home one day.
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. God, we lift you up. God, we give you glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He was a good dad. I was so glad we got reacquainted in 2015. And he hugged us so when we came to his store. He said, son, I love you. I'm sorry if we didn't always see eye to eye, but I'm here now. He was a good dad. He would always answer the phone whenever I called. Checked on me all the time. Taught our baby how to fish. How to clean fish. And all the long conversations. Amen. About he said, if I'll, I'll see you all later. If he ever called my name, we didn't know. That night we talked for two and three and two or three and a half hours to two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning. Chris said, Dad, now you got to go to church like we do. He said, yeah, I'm going to go sing. I'm going to go sing. And when we got the call that he was singing the praises unto the Lord. Yeah. When the Lord decided to take him up with his angel's wings, he never took another breath. If you got to go any kind of way, I know that's the way to go. Singing and praising 
the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate again Deacon Lawrence Bowles, Jr. This time will our cousin, Sister Latricia Smith come. I'm so glad I got a chance to meet her. And she was determined we were gonna all get together. <laughs> Please give her a hand. She helped coordinate a lot of this with us. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And I appreciate her. She is coming to read the obituary at this time. Yeah. Following her will be a memorial video presentation. And then I will be back to introduce the eulogist. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Latricia. It's my uncle, Junior. And um, before I start, I do want to thank all of my family who took all of my endless phone calls for the last <laughs> two or three weeks and um, for everybody who came out today and made it here. Okay, um, obituary. On April 24th, 2022, a beautiful Sunday afternoon, Deacon Lawrence Bowl Jr., Deacon, let me start over, Deacon Lawrence Bowles Jr., while singing and praising the Lord transitioned from this earthly life to God's eternal glory. Deacon Bowles, or better known as Junior or JC, was born May 2nd, 1952 in Pasco, Washington, to his parents, Lawrence Bowles Sr. and Rosie Bell Smith. In his early years, he moved to Seattle and was raised by Mr. and Mrs. Smothers in the Central District. J.C. attended school in Seattle and was a graduate of Cleveland High School. As a child, he loved to swim, play basketball and baseball, and he loved to fish. In 1978, he married the lovely Linda Winston. And to this union, Lawrence Christopher Bowles III and Salathia O. Bowles were born. J.C. was employed in the retail and customer service industries. He was most famous for his years working at Jordan's Drugstore and Richland's with the crispy fried chicken. He spent his early years in the Pacific Northwest and later in life, he lived in the state of Alabama where he worked in custodial services. He was known for his jokes and telling long stories. He was a dancer to his heart. He was also competitive in games such as darts, backgammon and chess and he truly wanted to always win. J.C. mentored many young people while being a baseball coach for the Little League team. He was known for taking the time to teach his family and friends, namely his grandchildren, nieces, and nephews, how to clean and catch fish. He called himself the Crappy King, and he would welcome the competition from anyone that would take the challenge. J.C. opened his home to take care of family at any time. He will never be forgotten for the love he gave. Ooh. He will never be forgotten for the love he gave to his niece, me, Latricia, nephew Byron's, Paul Jr., and many others. Some of his favorite sayings were good googly woogly. <laughs> You're a lion wonder. And I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. When you fish, he would say, you got to hold your mouth right to catch, you got to hold your mouth right to catch the fish. JC served for many years as a deacon at the Unity Christian Ministries Church of Tacoma, Washington. Most recently, he became a member of Woodbridge Community Church in Lakewood, Washington. He loved to praise the Lord with a shout and a dance. And when the music got right, he would belt out a song and sing unto the Lord. JC was preceded in death by his father, Lawrence Bowles Sr., his mother, Miss Rosie Smith, 
and his grandmother, Miss Gracie Williams. He leaves to cherish his family and to mourn his leaving this earth. His son, Dr. Lawrence Christopher Bowles III, Jacqueline of Pacific Washington, and his daughter, Salathia O. Bowles of Tacoma, Washington. His stepchildren, Jamisa, Lysandra, Rakita, Jawan, Jamie, Christiana, Dominique, and Angela. His siblings, Betty Spells of Moses Lake, Washington, Carolyn Knox of Moses Lake, Washington, Larry Bowles of Renton, Washington, John Lewis, Michelle of Stone Mountain, Georgia, Linda Lewis of Seattle, Washington, and Leroy Smith II, Trudy of Moses Lake, Washington, Anastasia Bowles of Katy, Texas, Tamara Bowles and Byron Bowles, both of Generet, Louisiana. He also leaves a host of great of grand and great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, and many, many friends. He will be greatly missed by all who knew and loved him. Tell somebody I'm gonna be free one day. Some glad morning. Yeah. Let's move on. We got to get out of here. Some glad morning. Some glad morning. Some glad morning. 
Can we celebrate the life and legacy of Deacon Lawrence Bowles, Jr.? If you have a white minivan, you are white Dodge minivan. You are blocking the chief of police. Please move it. He don't need to go nowhere. Thank you, cuz. The next presentation is from his sister, Anastasia Bowles from Texas. Freddie, there you go. Greetings uh, to my family, uh, family and friends of my brother JC. I am a uh, Stacy, I am the younger sister here in Katy, Texas, and um, this has been a great loss for me, um, especially since it feels as though uh, we were just connected. I can remember the first time he and Cindy came out here to visit with me. Um, it was just a natural connection. It feels as felt as though we had known each other all our lives. Um, and he was he was very happy and so was I um, and I could very well say that he my first thoughts were that he earned his namesake um, because the first thing he said was you know we're both we're both pretty and that's one thing that I can remember my dad would always talk about how handsome he was he would always brag about how handsome he was and um, that's the first thing that Junior said to me. So I, it was, I just kind of laughed because I thought about him. Um, yeah, he definitely earned his namesake. Uh, Dad also uh, liked to be well-dressed, and so did Junior. He always had uh, lots of suits and always wore his, his nice slacks, and he always had to have his jewelry on, his rings, and that was something else uh, that... Junior reminded me of with that. Um, I truly, truly am thankful for the time we had together. Thankful that we were able to connect and um, thankful that we were able to spend the time together that we did. Um, he's going to really, really be missed. Um, you know, it's, it was so unexpected. You always think you have more time. You always think, um, that you have another opportunity to, to visit and speak with them because he would always call me and say, sis, when you come and visit, when you coming out here? And I always was, I'm coming, I'm coming. You know, never thought that, you know, I would, wouldn't would have a chance to visit him. But um, this, is a, this has really been a 
something that's gonna have to take a little time to deal with but um, I just want to uh, say that he'll be he'll be truly missed and to all my family um, stay strong and may God give us the strength that we need um, to get through this and we'll have to keep each other in prayer and we'll 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 get through it thank you and uh, bless you guys and praise the Lord we thank God for all of you that have come today to celebrate the life and the legacy of our dad at this time it gives me great pleasure to introduce to some and present to others my husband Dr. Lawrence Christopher Bowles III DD he is a man after God's own heart. He was born to Miss Linda Winston, my mother-in-law. And our grandmother is here already. Our, um, also, Mother Orr Winston, our church mother. Amen. He was born to Linda, J.C. Jr., all those great names, <laughs> in January of 1980. Raised under the tutelage of his uncle, his great uncle at Bethany Temple Pentecostal Church in the Central District, amen? Reverend Willie Calloway. He was saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost at the age of 14, but he drifted away from God in his later teens. However, what the enemy meant for bad, God turned it around for good. In 2008, Pastor Bowles surrendered and gave his life back to the Lord. And he has been preaching ever since. He was facing a sentence of 42 years. But because of the favor of God upon his life, he only served a six-year sentence at the Washington State Penitentiary. Dr. Bowles is proud of his testimony. He is a credible messenger, amen. He is an author of a book called, I Made It Out by the Grace of God. He founded this great church in August, of on August 19, 2012, the Redeemed by the Blood Community Church of God in Christ here in the great city of Kent, amen. He holds many titles many positions. He is the former Episcopal adjutant to my late father, the Bishop James E. Hicks. He's the former president of the Department of Evangelism, Washington State Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, sorry, Washington Northwest, excuse me. He is currently the president of Region 6, Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. Church of God in Christ International. He is the special assistant to the president of the Northwest Regional Youth Department, Church of God in Christ International. He's also an international evangelist of the Church of God in Christ. He is most proud of earning his Doctorate of Divinity degree from St. Thomas Christian University of Jacksonville, Florida. He is the executive director of a community-based program where he does outreach and conducting educational activities in the city of Kent for at-risk youth and teens involved in gang-related activities. It is called the Men and Women That Care of the Teen Redeemed Life Center. Dr. Bowles also serves on numerous community boards, the City of Kent Mayoral Task Force, the City of Kent Youth Initiative, Community Collaboration, the Center for Children and Youth Justice, and a host of others. He is a newly elected city councilman of the city of Pacific Washington, who I'm very, very, very proud of. Yes, he is an anointed preacher, an anointed teacher, and a man of God. 
after the choir has come with their selection of uh, safe in his arms, I will ask everyone to stand besides the family as we get ready to receive our eulogist for the day. I would also like to invite you all, if you don't have a church home, family, come on to Cousins Church. Amen. We're here every Sunday at 1.30 so you can sleep in and get some breakfast and brunch and then come on down to Kent. Put your dinner on the stove, amen. And we give God the praise every Sunday. Praise the Lord. We love our pastor and our leader. At this time, safe in his arms.
understand everyone but family. Righteous Father, we praise you. We thank you and we give your name all of the glory and all of the honor. Dear Lord, give me strength. Strength like no other. me behind the cross. You're Alpha and you are Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. And we're here now, God, to celebrate life. It is ended on earth. It's now being lived in heaven. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart acceptable in thine sight dear Lord you are my strength and redeemer touch now in Jesus name let the church say amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I do honor God today and to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ whom is my everything so grateful and glad for the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost which is indeed my keeper and my sustainer yes. I do honor all of these great men of God yes. blessings to Bishop and pastor and to all of you pastors and to my friend Pastor McCain, blessings to you and to your lovely wives and to my amazing grandmother on today, Mother Oral Winston. To my beautiful mother on today, Mother Linda Winston. Do honor. Um, thank God for these fine musicians. Thank you all to my son. Amen. And to now to know that we have a preacher of the family. Blessings to you to your lovely wife, to my gorgeous and beautiful counterpart, my beautiful wife, my friend, to the love of my life. Help me celebrate her. What an amazing job you've done. Well, I do appreciate my family. Many of you I have not met, and I'm so glad that I have the blessed opportunity to meet each of you all. Uh, I wish it was under other circumstances, but I do highlight and note two in particular that I was raised with somewhat as I resided with my father in numerous of occasions. Uh, wherever he went, I went. Um, 
but I do want to acknowledge my cousin Tracy on today. Amen. 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 And to my cousin Byron on today, blessings to the both of them. I was telling a story, um, as I often tell, is that um, when we lived in the Central District, my father and um, whom I known as uh, my whole life as my stepmother, Carolyn, um, we were living in the CD and they had an old car. And this car had a hole in the floor behind the driver's seat. And I enjoyed sitting behind the driver's seat because I was the destructive child where I would enjoy dropping stuff out and putting my foot in the hole. And I think Byron got his foot caught once, I believe. I don't know if it was on accident or on purpose. His shoe fell out, off. <laughs> um, we have some great memories. I do honor my little sister on today. My baby sister, Salathia Bowles. Amen. I love her so much. I told her, I said, uh, uh, wipe your tears. Stick your chest out. And we'll grieve later because we got business to handle. Amen. It's been a challenging time. But uh, we made it through it. And we still got work to do, family. Amen. And I want to publicly say that I acknowledge my father's siblings, his brother, his oldest sister, all of his sisters, his um, Miss Linda, Auntie Linda and Auntie Betty and Uncle Larry and Uncle John. I honor each of you. Amen. And I want you all to know that my father, his business is in good hands. Amen. His business is in good hands. Amen. And I will do everything I can to allow you all to help us cherish his memories. I don't care what it takes. We're going to get through this. We just got some work to do. And just bear with us. Um, um, I do know there's a lot of stuff going on, but we're going to get through this. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for trusting me to handle uh, my father's business with integrity. And I will promise you that I will do just that. Uh, with integrity. Thank God to all of my siblings, Jamisa, amen, Chrissy, uh, Jamie, all of those that um, he, he, he categorized as family and kids. Uh, I don't want to miss that. Uncle Ed Lee, it's good seeing you. Uh, amen. I remember living there with you all and Patricia, um, I grew up with you all and I really appreciate you all. Um, I want to talk, uh, read from this subject of John, um, the 14th chapter. Um, and believe it or not, my father, he was a praiser bishop. He was a worshiper. He was a weeper. But he loved God. He loved God. He loved God. And if many of you do not know the story, he transitioned in the middle of a worship experience, not just a church service, but he transitioned in the middle of a worship experience while he was praising God. I, I told my wife, that's the way I want to go. Amen. Leaping and praising God. He, right after praising God, he took his last breath. They worked on him for a long time. And 
while they called me, I was here at the church praying because it was on a Sunday. And uh, we had just talked, as my wife was stated. We had talked for three and a half hours from 11 o'clock all the way up until 2.30. And I said, Dad, don't you got church in the morning? I mean, he had his talking shoes on, y'all. And I said, you got to go to go to church in the morning. He said, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I do. I'll talk to you tomorrow then. We were in preparation for a fishing trip. But uh, here we are. John, the 14th chapter, starting at the first through the sixth verse. Thank you, praise team and choir. And thank you all so much. The Bible reads us thus. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? Somebody just asked me, how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. The truth, can I preach for a while, y'all? And uh, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I want to talk for the next fleeting moments from this subject. His mansion was just ready. His mansion, it was just ready. There's no if, ands, cousin about it. His mansion was just ready. Yeah. I don't care how many persons or things or individuals tried to keep him from walking into his mansion. Believe it or not, when God says it's over, yeah. it's over. Um, while sitting in my office contemplating through prayer as I customarily do in preparation for every God encounter, I was paused with confusion and uncertainty. So, of course, many questions came to mind. First off, I was in disbelief that I'm having to even sit here and compose such a difficult sermon that I never anticipated that I would have to preach. Then I began wondering, how did we get to this day? Cousin Trees said, not only how did we get to this day, but how did we get here so soon? Although death is afforded to every person, the reality is that when it hits so close to home, it has the tendency to literally knock the wind right out of you. My attempt to be honest um, this afternoon that the acceptance of death and the preparation of death becomes a challenge to any person, especially as we consider who it might involve. But might I encourage you today, it's better to prepare for what you cannot change rather than to wait or to be caught off guard for what you cannot change to shake your very foundation without the opportunity to prepare. In other words, spend time in preparation for today to assure that your business is in order for your tomorrow. Come here, James, and holler at your boy, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. I won't be with you very long, but uh, all I'm trying to tell you today is to get your house in order. 
I dare somebody to just look across the room and just tell your neighbor to get your house in order. Uh-huh. Come talk to us, Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. I can only reflect on the conversations between my dad and I prior to his departure. We were in preparation, planning um, for a fishing trip. But of course, I'm certain of the plan of God. I say that with confidence because while on the phone in deep conversation, that was all he could uh, refer to. But the conversation was so in depth, Uncle Larry, and we were so spiritually and prophetically in tune to where consequently our conversation reverted to the preparation of his demise. Not knowing that uh, the very next day he received another phone call by the master himself. Y'all gonna help me preach this thing, aren't you? Uh, of course, we live um, in a day where people battle with uncertainties every single day. Um, as we look throughout our world, we become uncertain about the type of car we wish to drive. Uh, we become uncertain about where we wish to reside and the type of uh, home we wish to reside in. We become uncertain about what schools we wish for our kids uh, to attend. Furthermore, for many of us, if we would be honest, it wasn't easy for you to even get dressed for today's occasion because uh, you was uncertain about what to wear. Okay, y'all looking at me strange. Let's just be honest. Uh, today, when I got into my office, I had in mind a whole nother robe. But when I put the robe on uh, due to COVID-19, I, I was busting out of the robe. So I just had to minimize my attire and just put on what I knew what was comfortable. And so uh, if you could be honest with yourself today, um, your issue wasn't about uh, what could I really wear, but it was what could I really fit. <laughs> Y'all acting like you, 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 you're strange, but even as we collectively gather here um, this afternoon, um, under the conditions and which we all grieve, what we have been forced to face has its levels of uncertainty. Uh, can I be honest with you today that my greatest battle, um, Pastor Brown, isn't the fact that my dad is gone. Uh, but my greatest battle is the fact that he left us so suddenly without the opportunity to say, I'll see you later. Do I got to win this here? That's why I wish to pause to state that whatever you do, mm -hmm, yeah, Lord, uh, do your best not to assume that tomorrow is promised to anyone, uh, which then causes you to put on hold what you should have done today for a day that is never promised to us. Mm, in other words, get your business uh -huh, in order. Do I got a witness here? Uh, that's why I do my best uh, to make the effort to not live with any regret uh, so that when the day comes in which we have no control over, I could stand with boldness and without doubt confessing that I've done my best uh, and I've made my peace. Do I got to win this year? Uh, beloved, it was during, uh, uh, yeah, it was during uh, uh, my moments of meditation. And it was during my moments uh, of isolation that God reassured me that not only is he in a better place, but uh, he reassured me that it's a place uh, that he, our father, yeah, in heaven has prepared just for him. Can I talk to you today? I said God in heaven prepared a place just for him. Mm -hmm. And this place, uh, and let me pause there and tell you that if you only, um, yeah, if you only do what you need to do, God has a place prepared just for you. I dare you to just nudge the neighbor, sit next to you and say, hey, neighbor, God has a place prepared just for you. 
But the Bible says, if your ways, if your ways please me, watch your tone, both. Uh, I'll give you, yeah, the desires of your heart. Uh, uh, this place, uh huh. Let's get ready to go out the bass. Is oh God, uh, this place is a place not made with hands. Uh -huh. That's why Paul said, for we know that if our earthly house. Uh-huh, of the tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God. A house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. This place is a, a place where the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gates was of one pearl. And the streets of the city was pure gold. As it was transparent glass. Uh, although this place, Lord help me preach, uh, is not a place prepared for everybody. Uh, that's why Matthew said, enter ye in at the straight gate. Uh, for wide is the gate uh, and broad is the way uh, that leadeth to destruction. Uh, and many there be which go in thereat. Uh, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. But in this place we find rest. Do I got a witness here? That's why the Bible said, he said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you it. Take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. Did you hear what I say? For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. I stopped by here uh, to tell somebody uh, that my father, uh, did you hear what I say? Uh, I stopped by here uh, to tell somebody uh, that my daddy uh, is not dead. Uh, he's just resting in here uh, in my father's house. Oh, sucks. Uh, and Jesus. Uh, waited for us to get off the phone so that he can call them home that's why the bible said he said we are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord that's why we say that we therefore commit this body to the ground earth to earth ashes to ashes dust to dust in true and certain hope of the resurrection I just stopped by here to tell somebody that is not about this earthly body but it's by his spirit do i got a witness here whether if we bury him or if we cremate him it doesn't matter because we know where his spirit is we know where his spirit is going what glad morning yeah when this life is over Y'all help me preach. I fly away to a land where joy, joy unspeakable, full of glory, joy. Do I got to win this here? She'll never yield. Said I. I, 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 I I'm going to fly away. Do I got a witness here? And I heard the Lord say that he don't have 
to stress no more. Huh? Yeah. Huh? No more worry. Huh? No more medicine. Huh? No more heartache. Huh? No more. Huh? He don't have to worry. Huh? And I'm here. Huh? He not a double host. Huh? I'm here huh? to tell somebody. Huh? Don't wait. Until the battle uh, is over, uh, but I dare you uh, to shout uh, like you already uh, got the victory. Uh, shout uh, like you already uh, got some miracle. Uh, shout uh, like you already uh, won the battle. Uh, do I got to witness here? Uh, the battle. Uh, is not ours, but it belongs. It belongs to the law. That's why the Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, because in my Father. In my father's house, there are many mansions, and I'm ready to live in one of the greatest mansions that was made by God. And I'm here to tell my daddy, save, save a seat for me, save. A seat for me. I'll see you in the morning. When I rise, I'm gonna rise. Holy. When I rise, I'm gonna rise. Praying. When I rise, I'm gonna rise. Dancing. And There's a mansion that prepared. Just for my daddy, y'all can cry all you want, but I heard the Bible say, weeping may endure for a night. Help me holler one time. It's coming in the morning. They that sow in tears is going to reap with joy this joy that i have the world i hear your grandma huh? the world didn't give it to me the world can't take it away say it say it there's a mansion that's set up just for me, but just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on, family. After a while, we're going to make it. Hold on, family. After a while, God is going to rain on this kid. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Somebody sat in the morning. I dare you. Tell your neighbor. We going to see him again. Tell your neighbor. We going to see him again. We going to see him in the morning. Yeah, his spirit reigns with our father. His spirit. I dare you. If you a child of God, I dare you. Get up on your feet began to tell the Lord, here I am, it's me, oh Lord, standing, 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 yeah, standing in the need.
need a prayer. Not my mama. Not my daddy. Not the boy. But it's me now. I can't ride on the prayers of my grandma no more. I can't ride on the prayers of my mama no more. I can't ride on the prayers of my daddy no more. But it's me, me, oh Lord, say it, say it. Here I am, here I am, here I am. Yes, the Lord. To say, hey, Junior, this next dance that I'm about to give, it's for you. for him. Dad, I know this is what you wanted. You wanted us to leave with a praise. You wanted us to leave with our hands up. the top. God been too good to me for me to sit down on another prayer. If you do like I do,
Listen. Let me be honest with you. I'm dancing. I'm praising. Because I am confident. Listen. My father and I didn't always see eye to eye. Truth be told, I believe everybody has that story in this room, that new junior. Let's just be honest. I haven't dotted Paul Jr. all of my I's or crossed all of my T's. You hear the stories about me? They're all true. But I heard the Bible say old things have passed away. I went to the penitentiary at 19 years old. Was in and out of institutions since the age of 12. Literally. Went to the penitentiary for two murder beats. Was looking at the death penalty. My grandmother sitting right there. Said, grandson, whatever you do. Take it to trial. I said, Grandma, you don't know these people like I know them. I ain't going to tell, tell you exactly what I said. I said, you don't know these folks like I know them. I'm a nine-time felon. I said, Grandma, you don't know these people. They already got me labeled as a menace of society, a gang member. I said, they trying to take me out of here because this ain't my first shooting. Listen, I got caught with the gun. Confessed to the crime. Jesus. They was trying to go federal on me because it was a 40 caliber with an extended clip. The only plea that I had, D, was 42 years. I told my grandmother, I got to take it. I got caught with the gun, D, and I admit it to the crime. And the sad part, Cousin Tracy, is that I had two of my homeboy's kids with me. Didn't even know I was going there for that. I was just going there to collect some money, and I kept trying to just go in there. But the kids was here with me. Hallelujah. I went in their house. Laid, ended up laying everybody down. Shot one and chased the other one down the street in broad daylight, Pat. It was 11 o'clock in the morning. Sunny, just like this. But because Sherm was my drug of choice, I didn't even care. Can I just be honest with you? Told my grandma, Grandma, I got to plead to this 42 years. Because if I don't, they trying to give me life. She said, don't plead. You take it to trial. I said, I can't, Grandma. So they came back to the table and said, the public defender is willing to drop it down to 15 years. I said, I'll take it. My mom's here, my grandmother's here. And they said, my grandmother said, no, take it to trial. I said, you do not know these people, grandma, like I know them. I've been in this system my whole life. And she said, the crazy part about it, mother, is they don't know my God like I know them. Pastor JB, I took it to trial. When they first started, it was a murder one, murder two, burglary and a robbery with all gun enhancements. You know, when you get caught with the gun on you, you get gun enhancements. Hallelujah. Uh, I took it to trial. 
And I'm only telling you my version of the story because the song said, can't nobody tell it like I can tell it. And I don't know what my daddy done told y'all. But I'm going to tell you my version of the story because we all know that. My daddy will take some stories and it'll end up far from where, where the truth really started. And then by the time it gets to you, you done told it a whole nother way. I went to trial, Pastor Mike, Apostle. And watch this, cousin. They couldn't reach a verdict. They dropped the murder one down to an assault two. Dropped the murder two down to an assault three. Couldn't reach a verdict on the burglary or couldn't reach a verdict on the robbery. So only gave me gun enhancements on an assault two and an assault three. So I was blessed with only 66 months, about six and a half years. But while I was in the penitentiary, I was a wild child. So I ended up in, who said yes he was? <laughs> Don't be agreeing with me. I was a wild child. I was, they had me everywhere. I was in IMU for 14 months. Went from Walla Walla behind the walls to Quallum Bay. From Quallum Bay back to Walla Walla. Went to Stanford Creek. That's where my daddy showed up. Came and seen me every visit. Then I got in trouble because it was too loose for me there and I still wasn't delivered. So, you know, when environments are loose, you kind of feel like you can get away doing anything and I was getting away with every, everything so they sent me back to Walla Walla but while I was in Walla Walla y'all somehow some way the time that I was supposed to serve I didn't end up having to serve everything all the good time that I lost it was restored back to me from a law that passed about now getting good time on gun enhancements. What am I trying to tell you, Patrice, Patrice, Patricia, Auntie Patricia? Is that God, the same God that delivered me, delivered my father. Delivered my father. That's why he was found in church giving them praise and not at Oscars or the Rose Petal. And you know in Tacoma, they got the best clubs. So he wasn't in Tacoma partying and jigging and doing. But can I tell you, there's nothing too hard for God. Everybody wonder, how in the world you a nine-time felon? How in the world you a city council? How in the world you work close? You best friends with the chief of police and the mayor? How in the world? I could dig in my pocket. No, well, I could dig in my pocket. I ain't going to tell you everything. But I can dig in my pocket right now and show you how God restored all my rights to vote and to everything else. If God did it for me, he can do it for any. There's somebody in this house right now. That's, the enemy's been talking to you, saying you ain't good enough. You done been through too much. You can't turn it around. You can't change. Somebody in this house right now. That all that's that's this close to losing everything. Somebody in this house right now that's at the verge of giving up. I'm talking to you today. Ministering to your soul because watch this. It's not this earthly body that's going to heaven or going to hell. It's the spirit that dwells. That's why you got to do everything you can to get your spirit right. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's somebody in this house right now that's looking at this black casket knowing that there was many occasions
this could have been me. In fact, matter of fact, let's back up a little bit. There's many occasions that it really should have been me. There's somebody in this house right now that death is knocking at your door right now. I'm talking to you. But after looking, you're saying, I want to go where my brother is. That's the only way you're going to see him again. You ain't going to see him again nowhere. If you just out here just doing what you want to do, you ain't going to see him no more. I'm just telling you that now. So this will be your last visual of him. If you want to go where you will see him again, I want you to just raise your hand. In fact, just stand. Just stand because I'm going to pray. If that's you today, today is the day. I, I, I'm, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being stressed. Now, I don't need everybody to stand. I just need those of you that, that that's made up in your mind that for God, I will live. And for God, I'm going to die. That's you today. I just want you to just stand. And I just want you to just lift your hands and just say, Lord, here I am. Forgive me. Forgive me. You don't have to be ashamed. You know, I promise you, you do not have to be ashamed. You do not have to be ashamed. In fact, if you need me to come and lay hands on you, I, I, I just want you to make your, your way up. I, I believe in COVID. We got COVID machines right here. We got one there and one in the back there. They're COVID machines and they're 99% proven effective to where they kill all airborne viruses. And it's proven against COVID. So... If that's your petition today, that Lord, here I am. I want to live according to your will. I want you to just make your way up to the front and I'll pray for you. Sometimes that's all we need is just some support to help pray us through some stuff. Sometimes it's a challenge. It's hard. But, but if that's you today, I, I promise you, alcoholism, you can't be delivered from it. We, you can't be delivered from it. Partying and gambling. You can't be delivered from it. But the Bible said, if my people which are called by my name will just humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then will I heal your land. I'll hear from heaven and hear and heal your land. Listen. Turned over into the hands of our funeral home directors. But watch this, Jesus died so that we can live. Jesus died so we can live. And I just want to encourage you today. Don't wait until it's too late, cousins. Aunties and uncles. Family and friends, don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until it's too late. Then you on your sick bed and can, can barely talk or with two down your throat, ventilators and a host of things. And then now all of a sudden you try to turn your life around. But God will give you everlasting life if you just turn to him. Righteous Father, we praise you and we lift your name on high. Thank you for the love, the life, and the legacy that my father lived. The example and the teachings that he left. The inspiration that he gave. The conversations that he rendered. Thank you, God, for allowing him to answer every call. Thank you, God, for allowing him to see something in me and pull it out of me. Thank you, God, for allowing him not to judge me according to my sinful works. Thank you, God, for touching his heart to forgive.
where I had failed them or let them down. It was you, God, that lived in him that allowed our relationship another chance. And so because of that, God, I give you glory. Because I have no regret in my heart. I am at peace with his place. In the mansion where I'm striving to excel to. I thank you and I praise you for lending him to us for the 69 years that you've seen fit. Thank you for all of your children that's here today that came to celebrate their brothers and their uncle and their friend and their cousin and their relative. Now, dear Lord, we ask you to bless them and give them safe travel back home. Those have traveled near and far. But I speak in the atmosphere that it's never goodbye. And we praise you. Thank you for the morning. you. As I mentioned on last night, that if you do not, and I hate to speak it during this setting, but I wish to encourage you. If you do not have your business in order, and I'm going to speak it at every funeral that I do. If you do not have your business in order, get it in order. Don't depend on auntie and them. They do it for you. Don't depend on mama. Don't put the pressure on mama and daddy. But I encourage you. Get with this man. To get help get your business in order. Don't just walk around. Bring me down just a little. Don't just walk around and say, oh, I'm going to get it together. Don't put off what you can do for today for tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised to no one. Please, ma'am, please, sir, I beg of you, don't put the responsibility even on your kids. It's a challenge. Get your business in order. Get a policy. If you're too old or too sick, you feel to get a policy, well, get with Pastor Micah. He'll help you. Get your stuff in order. But don't, 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 don't just keep going through life. Thinking that, oh, I got it all. It's all right. It's all right. Tomorrow is not promised to nobody. But now into the hands of MB Daniel's Mortuary.
Come on, just take a moment to just bask in his presence. can't do it, don't worry. But Tracy and Byron, you are more than welcome to come up. You can stand with Yes, my dad's children. This is, being that this is our final, see you later, I think it's only befitting to have the siblings and, in fact, Byron and Tracy was like my father. They were really like my siblings. They were really like my siblings. And so I thought that this would be fitting for you all to be and join us as we commit his body. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world our deceased brother, father, we commit his body. And you all can tear off your flowers and just put it on the casket. Just tear off the pieces of the flower. Commit his body to Mother Earth. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself and if everyone can repeat after me our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for now and forever. Amen. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Blessed are the dead who dies in the Lord from henceforth. Ye saith the Spirit, that thy may rest from their labors and their works. Do follow them. You all may go back to your seats. And I want, as the pallbearers will be um, transitioning my father out, um, I would like for the family in your, you all's respective orders to follow behind the casket as we transition him outside. Does my truck need to be moved? And I want our media team, I do know, I want our media team to keep the live rolling. And I want you to follow the casket all the way outside until the conclusion of the service. And I don't know about, I believe that once the casket gets into um, the hearse, I believe we will be releasing balloons, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay, she'll do it at the re So also, if you um, intend to uh, participate in the repast, I want to encourage everybody to talk to my cousin, Tracy. Wave at him, Tracy, so everybody will know who she is. So if you wish to attend the repast, now you may get a yeah or you may get a no. That ain't my... <laughs> but just talk to Tracy, all right? God bless you all. I'm going to put on my robe, tell the story, how I made it over. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm going to put on my he believes robe, me. tell he the story. How I made whosoever lives on me shall never die. I'm going to put on my robe. Tell the story. How I made it over. Live also as a shadow and continue if not. I'm going to put on my robe. And it is certain to tell the story. How I made it all. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I'm going to put on my robe. How I made it over. Lord, I have I'm going to put on my robe. Tell the story. How 